So this is linking OpenStreetMap and Wikidata. It's a case study of Taiwan's villages and rivers data set. And this, where's the speaker gone? This is HackMD. Oh, Dennis, Dennis is going to be doing this one. So I'll play the video and I'll see you on screen afterwards. Okay, hello everyone. This is Dennis Chen from Taiwan. I want to talk about cleaning and managing data set in Taiwan. My speech title is Linking Open Stream Map and Wikidata, Case Study of Taiwan's Village and River Data Set. My online ID is Superplex, one of the community members of OpenStreetMap Taiwan and Wikidata Taiwan, currently serving as the board of director of Wikimedia Taiwan. Here is today's talk uh, outline. I will talk about some general information of OpenStreetMap and Wikidata situation in Taiwan. Then the first uh, part will deal about the village data set. The second is the river. And then the final part will talk about cemetery in Taiwan. Uh, OpenStreetMap Taiwan had co-hosts with Wikidata Taiwan, a monthly meta in Taipei. And there is a huge overlap of community members between Wikidata and OpenStreetMap in Taiwan. The OpenStreetMap Taiwan community keep track of major development in Taiwan. And we sometimes discuss a uh, tagging schema uh, mapping in Taiwan. And also we uh, keep track of vandalism and fix these uh, vandalism. Like this one is uh, Chinese people keep telling that Taiwan belongs to China. This one also, the other notes about they keep telling uh, Taiwan belongs to China. Or sometimes they will editing it and change some uh, status from Taiwan to China. It's quite annoying. And now I think this one's the most ridiculous editing. Uh, they uh, edit add a cross Taiwan Strait Railroad linking uh, China to Taiwan, and and the realistic situation is not quite is quite not possible in the near future. So it's uh, quite uh, it is all reverted quite shortly before someone has spot this this uh, problem. And also Chinese people, recently Taiwan is, is an international hotspot and for diplomat and military exercise. Chinese people are curious about Taiwan's military plans, but they misuse the OpenStreetMap notes and adding, keep adding names uh, military camps or military uh, unit and use it as a personal bookmark. Here is some uh, that's the talk I gave that year. And they all are talking about data set management and data set cleaning. Like the first one is I talk about the I talk in the one of the most important open source conference in Taiwan, Code Club. And I also talk in some international OpenStreetMap related or Wikidata related by like Hot Summit or Wikidata.com. And also, I talk about cemetery data set in one of the local conference. Uh, more, uh, more about the. They are more focused on the culture, and the national, uh, recording. And here's a quick summarize of some specialties of OpenStreetMap in Taiwan. Compared to other commercial maps. OpenStreetMap have much higher coverage of power towers, hiking routes, and also similarity. All three are quite common in the hike in the mountainous area, and it's quite help, handy to know if you're interested in hiking during your uh, leisure times. And OpenStreetMap is a web map and could easily link to each other. So like projects like Wikidata and Wikipedia. The multilingual tagging schema is designed by default. 
may also allow to add not only the local Mandarin but also other Taiwan national language like Taiwanese Hokkien or Taiwanese Hakka and various Formosa Australian language and also helps foreigners like adding English or Japanese name label. Here is the example of the most uh, used hiking map, the Rudy map. They use OpenStreetMap data set. And yeah, they quite, the hiking people in Taiwan rely heavily on OpenStreetMap. Here's another example that uh, emphasizes OpenStreetMap's uh, real data power. Chiang Kai-shek is one of the dictator and former president of Taiwan. And there are several na road names after him. It is called Zhongzhen Road in Taiwan. We can easily use OpenStreetMap a toy that overpass Turbo to analyze and visualize road named after him. Here's the, oh, I already mentioned that we have a quite a huge coverage of power towers and substation, which is quite helpful for hiking people. And it's easy, uh, can easily be uh, visualized by overpass turbo. And for the wiki data, they work very hard with the art people and using a uh, and linking using a government data set like the river code the village data set to Taiwan government publication number. And also we, the Wikidata Taiwan community, I work with the Hakka speaking people to uh, write some Hakka team data. And here's the progress in 2022. And it is, we all, the whole, village is already mapped on both OpenStreetMap and Wikidata. And, but we have to keep track for the added or remove village in Taiwan in 2022. So OpenStreetMap and Wikidata Taiwan community have to change according to the corresponding uh, government data set to edit on OpenStreetMap and Wikidata. And for the river, we already add those big rivers, but we're still missing some small creeks, so I have to uh, add it one by one if we run into them. Um, inspired by Surf, also known as Ver Yujing from OpenStreetMap Philippine, he has started mapping the basic uh, uh, union, administrative union in Philippine, the Baranga. Uh, inspired by him, I want to tell the Taiwan story of village mapping. The OpenStreetMap Taiwan community took four years to map every village in Taiwan. And the total number of village in Taiwan is 7,749. And all village are linked with government ID and Wikidata items. Here is the visualization of the whole near 80,000 bridge in Taiwan. Here's an example of one of the village. It is new established in 2022. It is in Taoyuan, the Xingzong village. And I, I have to say that the Taiwanese government have sometimes had changed the village quite often. So we have to have some kind of method or toy to monitor the situation. One of the community members has set up a toy to monitor government data set. If there is a new entries or remove entries, we can make corresponding data on both Wikidata and OpenStreetMap. And here's a quick summary of the village data set. It is quite a hard work to keep up with both OpenStreetMap and Wikidata. Keep it up to date to the newest government data set. And if you have to edit both with their OpenStreetMap, map, you have to have both knowledge on both uh, projects. And you have to add, add it in time and label the revoked village in time. 
and it's much easy to do it on quick data because you just have to do it before the effect data date. But on OpenStreetMap, you have to wait when the new village is actually created or uh, dissolved. So the time to map on OpenStreetMap is quite a short time. Now is the second data set, the rivers in Taiwan. The river story. And we had some problem with documents because small queries usually don't have documents, just have little documents. And I have to emphasize here is uh, adding or editing OpenStreetMap relation is quite a hard job, not easy for newcomers. And sometimes we have to survey to get the real river data set. We couldn't easily use uh, judgment by the available government data set or online resource. And by using Overpass Turbo, we can easily get the whole list of rivers in Taiwan. And with government river code and Wikidata reference, reference number. Here is the first data set, the cemetery. I already said that it's quite common in mountainous area and quite easy to spot on the satellite image. So it's, it's quite easy to map on OpenStreetMap and it has a high coverage uh, cemetery in Taiwan. Here is the one of the old and historical cemetery in Taiwan, the Nanshan Cemetery. It had the Wikipedia and we did our page. They have great detail, they have detailed description and also some pictures. But unfortunately, no geodata like the house the area coverage. But for the help from OpenStreetMap community, we, did, we can easily uh, have an idea of how Nanshan Cemetery uh, it is on the map. We can easily get the whole area information, and there's some. Metadata like name, religion, or the cross link to the third party like Wikidata and Wikipedia by looking on the OSM object. And here are some static of, about Taiwan Cemetery. And we have some commercial map and government map. They had some kind of cemetery data on both. Um, commercial map, Google Maps, or the government data map. And, but unfortunately, you can't get the real data. And sometimes there are just a point represent this cemetery, not an area. So if you want to reuse, and this, this is, we have to say this is not open data, and use this as your own case, your own risk, you have to draw it and digitize by yourself by mimic Google Maps or the government map. But for the help of OpenStreetMap and some toys like OCM, it is quite easy to get it by just one line of command. Like you want to know the tag of cemetery, just that line you can get the whole cemetery idea of Taiwan. Here is a list of the most recent, most common use tags of cemetery. And despite land use, then is the name. Then the frequent use tag is religion. And some cemetery have wiki data link or address. Let's analyze cemetery names by just one line command line. And we found out most of the cemetery in Taiwan are operated by government and sometimes private sector. And we also slot some church-owned or temple-owned cemetery. And for the religions of cemetery in Taiwan, we already said that most cemetery in Taiwan are government operate, the religion independent, but there are still still, still some cemetery are operated by church or temple. And we can easily analyze by just uh, filter out the religion tag. Just use this one line, uh, command line. You can get it instantly. And we get some religion 
tax information, and we found out that it's not common to add religion tag on these cemeteries. And we have also spot some obvious mistakes like putting the name field into the religion name field. And here's a quick uh, to summarize about the chance of mapping change data set. The data quality is a big problem. It has low and high. And for both OpenStreetMap and Wikidata, there's a fundamental, there are both fundamental platforms, most people view. So it is not easy to recruit people to do the hard fundamental works. And for the multilingual part, it is default by design on both projects, but we still need uh, the people who can speak the local language to help. So we need fundraising, human resource. And it's quite hard working on cleaning and mapping data. And we have well already told you. And but they have some good parts because OpenStreetMap and Wikidata can easily link to each other and also other third party databases like GNS. But you have to have both knowledge and editing OpenStreetMap and Wikidata at the same time. And sometimes you have to program. This, it is a very, very tricky problem to solve. And already said that the data quality has high and low. So sometimes you have link, you are cross link, and you have to uh, jump out and edit the data set itself. And you need to fix the data problem. And you need time and patience. We already said multilingual is default in design, but we still need people with the who is familiar with the local language. Currently, there's a language revival moment in Taiwan for natural languages like Taiwanese Hokkien and Hakka, but people are not familiar with the written form, and also not uh, many books published in these languages this Taiwanese natural language written form. And for the Hakka people, uh, they have to decide which romanized solution to write in Hakka and decide different language code for different Hakka written form. And Hakka people, and we are desperately calls out for Hakka people who speak Hakka to speak for themselves and help with the Hakka name label. And for the future plan, we want to hold theme workshops with the help of other communities, even during the COVID-19 pandemics. And we want to teach newcomer how to edit OpenStreetMap in both Wikidata. And we have to emphasize again that it is quite hard to edit relation on OpenStreetMap and then link to other database. And recently, I already said that Taiwan has a new law to preserve those national languages, including not only Mandarin, but also Taiwanese Hokkien, Taiwanese Hakka, and various uh, Formosan language. And we want to help these language to add these natural language to both OpenStreetMap and Wikidata. So, Xiaoli. Thank you. And here's my contact information. If you have any question, I can uh, answer it during the live Q&A section. Thank you again. Okay, so Dennis, thank you for that video. Um, and sorry to everyone to prove this was in a recording of me. I'm sorry about the... Um, the lack of volume at the start, we couldn't hear in the auditorium either, so um, we knew. Uh, we've got a few questions here. Um, uh, I'm going to start with, how often does vandalism occur or is spotted in Taiwan? I think probably occurs uh, three to four times a year. So it's not that frequent, but 
it's still quite annoying. Okay. Therefore, it's quite uh, it's quite easy to fix it. Just revert it or just simply close those annoying nodes. Yeah, yeah. So I guess I mean that's more a question for another talk, and I think there might be some about vandalism um, at the conference. Um, but good to know it's not too many. Um, the, uh, yeah, so um, we'll go then. Um, how does so this you you focus a lot on the wiki data links. Um, so how does the OpenStreetMap community benefit from the wiki data links? I think that's a great question. Um, and also, are there any applications exploiting or using those links? I think one point is that you can double check: is this uh, all covered in OpenStreetMap? by comparing to Wikidata. Uh, there are some duplicate Wikidata open stream map. And you can also uh, add the full tag to both projects at the world by checking each other's each one site and make sure both sites that are, are near perfect. And in the future if there's some modifications, you can also both Model 5 um, OpenStreetMap and Wikidata. And in Taiwan, OpenStreetMap community and Wikidata community is quite overlapped uh, of these uh, members. So it's very, very uh, quite easy to collaborate between persons. Right. So it's about combining that. And if someone puts something in or updates one place, both projects are kind of updated with the links. That's good. Yeah. Um, there was a question that I think was lower down, but um, I think it's important to understand this. Um, how many people have been doing all this village mapping, or, or generally, how many mappers do you think there are in Taiwan? I think for the village mapping, there are four to five main contributors to map all the whole village data set and compare to the government data set. And making sure that there are all the GIS the geometrics future are mapped and also linked to the urban ID and also Wikidata. And in the early times, we now know that I, I think I already mentioned that it's quite hard to edit patients, this kind of a data type in OpenStream map. So we didn't import the directly from the government source. We just uh, draw it by, by, uh, by com uh, to the government source and make sure it is all drawn all well in our hands. So it's quite a hard work to not only the metadata part of the village, the name, the English names, or the local natural language names, but also the geometric to make it more uh, near uh, yeah, the government source. Yeah, and yeah. The whole yeah. OpenStreetMap community, I think it's probably uh, 20 to uh, 30 members that are uh, drawing on different parts, like some uh, construction uh, sites, or they're more focused on the local living, uh, nearby living areas, so adding or modify shops and modify the inventory facilities. Right. Yeah, so that's good to know. So there's sort of the 20, 30 OpenStreetMap people and then the core four to five that have done all that linking. Um, and you mentioned a bit that you're getting the geography right. I think in your talk you said, you know, Google might just have a point. You're getting the correct geography and the outline of the places. Um, there was a question there about uh, the authority. So you're trying to pull it from them. Have you tried contacting the authorities, the local governments, to try and get that data you need rather than just do it, you know? Uh, for the government parts, I think they are aware, or not aware of the OpenStream Map Taiwan communities. But you know that the government has its own ways of doing things. So they're not that uh, like to collaborate with the communities. They are open to let us use the data just for the, just for the licensings. Yeah. Yeah. And but for the river parts, we actually have making big progress to link it um, 
uh, that the government announced uh, release data set to have the Wikidata item ID on the government documents. So on the Wikidata part is doing quite well. And we think one day might also include open stream map relation ID for the river river data sets. Oh, that's nice. That's great. I think knowing me from the UK, that you've got the local authorities. Sometimes they're helpful. Sometimes they're not. You need to meet someone that understands what you're doing and and is a friend. You know. But yeah, I understand those difficulties. Um, let's mark that one. Um, okay, a good question here. Uh, are the current tools enough, or should there be new tools to make the work easier? Uh, I think it depends because for OpenStreetMap contributors, they always the hard way to just draw everything and writing every tag to fix all these data. And it is good to have some toys to like remind us that it is time the new village already is set up and we should map it on OpenStreetMap. Or just reminding, oh, the government data set has some modifications. So we just check on this the government data and make the corresponding wiki data and open stream map modifications. So I think um, toys are a good thing to have, but have to think uh, very careful how to design it and use it by the communities. Yeah, yeah. I think that answer kind of also shows a bit about your community and your country. Where is it at in that if you're asking not where you should be mapping or where where has changed is important shows but mm, you've yeah. done a lot of mapping and it's the bits that are missing um okay cool um i think we'll go for what the one last question because it's there um yeah. why are the cemeteries mapped a lot in taiwan and are people using that data um uh, for this part uh, i think for open shaman communities controvers it is quite easy to spot it on the satellite image. And it is also good to avoid these areas during you have some hiking. We have time you're hiking or actually they're on site and just use your phone to check out, oh, there's a cemetery nearby, so I should avoid this, this area. And I also mentioned that Rudy map is one of the best hiking maps in Taiwan. Uh, they combine the OpenStreetMap data and the government uh, data sets. And that is not only those uh, hiking around those small uh, hills, but also hiking those big mountains in Taiwan is very convenient. So I think if it is very handy if you have these kind of symmetry data and let them decide on site or during the planning, uh, yeah, during the planning times. Yeah, yeah, that's nice, even if the place isn't important. If if you can spot it as a mapper, you probably spot it as someone walking past. So it, it's important to know what's there. Um, great. Well, thank you a lot, Dennis, for joining us um, yeah. remotely.